Now I'm just using my DeWalt uh, miter saw to make my cuts. I always cut the very tip of the uh, two or four off before I begin cutting. That way I uh, get that factory edge off there and get a good square edge starting off. Now I'm drilling pocket holes in the aprons or the stringers. Uh, on each end, I'm putting two pocket holes on each end. All right, so now we're gonna assemble the table. I just assemble it upside down on my table. You see uh, my new baby Charlie there. And I'll drop a card above if you wanna check her out. She's a new shop dog. So uh, a little bit of glue on each end. I use that Irwin 36 inch clamp and then the Craig face clamp there. Keep everything flush while I uh, screw everything together. Those pocket holes. Just make sure that the top of the stringer is flush with the top of the leg. Now it's time to cut our tuba twos for the stringers on the bottom. Uh, using my Mousecraft feather board to keep everything pressed against the fence and then that straight edge uh, to the joint, one edge of that. I'll talk about how to do that in a few minutes. Now to install those tuba two stringers, I measured down from the bottom of the leg two inches. And that two is from the bottom of the leg to the bottom of the stringer is two inches. And then I just use clamps and uh, pocket screws and uh, those uh, two by two stringers are pocket hole, uh, two pocket holes on each side on the bottom of them so that they don't show once you've got them installed. I just use my router with a quarter inch roundover bit and just round over the bottom of those legs so that they don't splinter. And then we start off with uh, 60 grit. Uh, sandpaper with my Orville sander, sand everything down, and then I'll put a 120 on and sand down to 120. 120 is as fine as I sand down to on this frame. Before we get ready to prime and paint this, I've got it sanded, but one thing I want to do is get the prepare it for the tabletop to be put on there. So I use these Rockler tabletop fasteners. I'll drop a link in the description. Uh, some people call them Z clips because they're in the shape of a Z. They have a hole on, the, on one side. And what that does is if the tabletop is here, this will slide into your skirt, into a hole you cut, and then you'll screw that into your tabletop. And <clears throat> what that does is it allows for expansion and contraction of your tabletop because if you just take some Craig screws and screw up through here, here, and here, then you've secured that tabletop to your frame, but it doesn't allow the natural movement of the wood, and then what's going to happen is it's going to bust over time. So if you have these, it does allow it for a little bit of wood movement. And it's, you can't take the tabletop and move it, but it, you know, it gives it enough that it, it gives it a light, you know, a slight movement allows for that. And how I cut my holes, a lot of people use biscuit joiners for this. So if you have a biscuit joiner, you can use it for this. But I use just a eighth inch straight bit on my router with my edge guide set to that depth. And I just took the Z clip, put it on the uh, router, <clears throat> set it to that, that depth I wanted, and then use the edge guide the same way uh, so that I know how, how far back I want it. And that's what we're gonna do now is just, I'm gonna cut three on the long side, two on the short side on these end tables. End table, I'm making two. But this is, I'm um, showing the, the process of one. You probably only need two on each side, but I like to put an extra one in there just in case. Uh, just gives a little more stability to me, so. And they're not that expensive. I'll drop a link in the description to them. Let's go ahead and cut these and then this will be ready for prime paint. Now you can see the slot is cut. This will insert into there, and then I will put a, a screw from here, uh, from underside into the tabletop itself, and then that will allow expansion and contraction this way, left and right, as well as in and out a little bit, and this will hold it also secure. So these are pretty neat little deals. So now it's time to paint the frames. I got, uh, as you can see, I've got a whole set here I'm building, but I'm showing the end table build. I've got the coffee table and two end tables. And what I like to use is Sherwin Williams. It's a quick dry stain blocking primer. It works really well as blocking the, the knot holes on this pine because a lot of times they'll leak on you. Uh, they'll seep through the paint, the stain will. So this works really well to, to block that. You pick it up at Sherwin Williams. It's like $20 a gallon or so. 
And then I'm gonna be putting it on with my Home Right Finish Max uh, Super, I think is what the name of it is. This is, I got a review of this, check the card, and I'll drop a link in the description. But this, this puts on the paint pretty good. It, it saves a ton of time versus brushing. If I was gonna brush all this on, uh, each coat would probably take me 30, 45 minutes for all three pieces, maybe longer than that. And then with this, you're looking about five minutes per coat. And I usually put two coats of the primer and then I, I'm gonna paint Biscuit White. It's a Sherwin-Williams Pro Classic. I'll, I'll paint uh, probably three coats of that on this, uh, just on these frames. Spray a coat of that primer and then after it's dry, I'll start putting coats of the uh, Sherwin-Williams Pro Classic Biscuit White. tops for a frame we've painted and the way I build my tabletops these are pine two by eights you can use two by sixes uh, whatever you want I've already cut them to length at 29 inches I know that I need three of them to make up the width I'm wanting so <clears throat> what I do is I joint with the table saw because I don't have a joiner if you'll look up in the cards now I'll put a, a link to a video up there I made on jointing with a table saw but just a quick rundown for you what I do is I take a straight edge. This is a Stanley four foot level. You can get them on Amazon for about $15. And then on my table saw, I set the fence to the this width, the, the width of the level, plus the width of my stock. And I'm gonna take this edge off about a blade width of this edge. I'm gonna run all boards through there and take, so, so we got three boards, take one edge off each board. And then what we do is put the straight edge away, flip the board over, put the cut edge against the fence, uh, move the fence to your desired thickness or width, and then run it through. And then you've got two pretty straight edges. It works really well if you don't have a, a jointer. So that's what I'm fixing to do, and we'll start building these tabletops. So if you've seen me uh, build tabletops before, you know what I'm gonna do. I've used pocket holes. I've already got four of them drilled in two of these boards. And then we're gonna put a little uh, tight bond wood glue on there. And then just put them together with these this pocket hole method. So basically what you're gonna have is three boards joined together just like that. And I'll, like I said, wood glue between these two joints. I'll clamp them together and uh, use my face clamp here, my Craig face clamp to uh, get these flush, and then we'll put those four pocket holes, or eight total pocket hole screws in there, and then we'll have a tabletop ready for sanding. sanding this is a uh, little edge is lift up a little bit but the joints are extremely tight so you don't have any gaps in those joints what you're seeing is uh, this board is a little thicker than this board beside it I don't have a planer so I can take a belt sander and we'll sand that joint down as well as this joint and we'll have two nice tight joints sand off some of these imperfections and once this is sanded we're ready to put on some pre-stain conditioner and then sand it table top uh, this is uh what i did was uh, you saw me cutting down the two by eights and these are actually they wound up being about six and five sixteenths inches uh three of them six and five sixteenths inches joined together are they perfect no but are they nice yes 
He doesn't have to be perfect to be nice. And I'm building a rustic farmhouse style end tables, so I don't want them to be exactly perfect. Uh, I don't even know that I could build something exactly perfect at this point. But the joints, as you can see, there's no gaps there. That's all jointed on a table saw. Uh, the, the, the difference in height was taken care of by a belt sander, but you could easily do that with a orbital sander, which is what I did before I got the uh, belt sander. So you can see that these are really nice uh, end table tops, pocket hole together. Uh, most anybody with a pocket hole jig can do this. Uh, it's just a pocket hole jig and a table saw. Uh, before I got a good table saw, I was, I was not able to get those joints like that. No way. I tried doing everything from using a circular saw with a straight edge. Uh, uh, I just I couldn't do it. So I tried ripping edges off and, and different things and never could do it. So if you don't have a jointer or a table saw, it's going to be difficult to get those tight joints. You can get them close, but you can't get them perfect. Uh, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect to be nice. I'll bring this closer to you. Right here's a joint, and then right here's a joint. It's probably difficult to see. But you can see the lines if you really look right there and there. Uh, I'll turn these knot holes up on purpose because the customer wants that. And so that's what they're gonna, gonna get there because that's what they want it. And uh, it looks really nice. When you, we're gonna stain this a dark walnut and it's gonna be really pretty uh, once we get our finishing all on. So now all I gotta do with this one is wipe it down. Uh, I'm gonna wipe it or actually blow it off with the air blower and then take a damp um, microfiber cloth, wipe all this dust off, let that dry, and then we'll be ready to put the um, pre-finish or pre-stain conditioner on there. Uh, one more thing. Uh, if, you, if you've not seen any of my videos before on how I make these tabletops and how I do these edges, it's a 3 8 inch roundover bit and I have it sticking past flush about maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Just depends. And then that gives you that gives you that little detailed edge there. That way it doesn't just look like a rounded over piece. Or if you wanted to just round over, you could do that. Or you can leave it square. Just those sharp edges, I would I would probably go ahead and hit that with a with the with the orbital sander and just knock that sharp edge off. And then on the bottom, I took a quarter inch round over bit and rounded the bottom edge. That way it's smooth and it's not got that sharp uh, sharp point on it. And then, of course, on the corners, I rounded those off also. I always like to use this uh, Minwax pre-stain conditioner on pine. What I like to do is apply a liberal amount. Uh, you don't want it, like, standing on the, the material. So you can just see I, I wipe it, and then I, I use a dry part of the cloth to get any excess. But I like to let that dry for about 30 minutes before I put any stain on. So after the pre-stain conditioner is dry, what I like to do is take my Minwax. I just use an old t-shirt I cut up. Uh, then I, I like to stain those pocket holes first, and then the bottom, and then the edges, and then flip it over and do the top. Uh, if you have a little e excess on there, you just wipe that off with any extra after it dries for a few minutes. And I'll do the same thing on the end table tops that you see now. got to build the bottom shelves and what I've done is these are one by sixes I've already cut them at 17 and 15 16 inch each give or take what I do is I take this one piece I'll cut it a little long and then I'll just trim it just a little bit until it slides in there uh, just so I mean you don't want it to be extremely tight and you don't want it to be uh, very loose either so that's how I do that and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna rip them all the exact same width. So I've got three of them cut. I'm gonna rip them down the same width so that we're building a shelf and I'm gonna pocket hole screw them together. And then we'll have a bottom shelf and then these will be pocket holes screwed into the the, uh, the bottom railing there. And then that, and then you'll have a nice shelf to be a good sturdy shelf. Uh, we're gonna do that on this table and then we'll be able to sand and stain the shelves. Once I get my pieces fit, uh, cut to size, what I'll do is I'll take them over to the uh, pocket hole, the Craig K5 that I've got. I'll drill three pocket holes in each one, on two of the three boards, and use a little wood glue at the uh, Craig face clamp, and then I'll just screw them all together until I get one to And here I'm just doing a dry fit. You don't want it to be so tight you have to hammer it in, but you also don't want it loose that it just falls through. So 
So it takes a little bit of uh, nibbling with the saw until it fits perfect. All right, I've got uh, sawdust all over me. I just got it all over my work. So it's time to clear coat. My stain is set uh, overnight on these pieces. I've got one coat of clear on my tabletops. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put one coat on these. Usually the shelves, the bottom shelves, I'll put two coats of clear. And then on the top, I'll put three coats of clear. If you've watched my channel any amount at all, you know this is the stuff I use and I believe in. I buy this with my own money. I'm not sponsored by them. I won a can of it several months ago on Instagram. A pint, a little small. I used it and loved it. So this is a satin finish. I really like it. Be sure to stir because if you don't stir, all those resins settle to the bottom. You'll put it on and it'll come out glossy. So stir it really well. Don't shake it. That puts bubbles in it and then bubbles transfer onto your finish and it doesn't look good. I just use a high quality brush. Bought this at Sherwin Williams. I say high quality. I paid eight bucks for it. So I mean, it's not top of the line, but you know, a medium quality brush. This is a two inch uh, flat brush. Uh, you see some of these uh, my staining and finishing tips. I'll drop a card above to show you how I do this stuff. But you just stir this up pretty well. This this is expensive finish. It's uh, thirty to thirty five dollars a, a quart, depending on uh, Amazon. Really, it's where I buy it off of. I'll drop a link in the description. So once it's stirred, what I do, I just dip the tip of that brush in there, wipe off the excess. You want to make sure your work pieces free of dust, which I don't know how I got dust all over it starting out first thing in the morning, but. I don't just drench it, but I want a good coat to start with, especially since I'm only gonna do two coats. After this coat, I'll take a high grit sandpaper and a sanding block like this. You can buy these at Walmart, this. I bought the sandpaper off of Amazon. It comes in like a pack of 50 of all different grits. This grit is uh, 800 grit. So once this is dry, I'll go with the green and I'll knock off the any rough parts and then wipe it down with a damp cloth, let that dry, and then I'll put a second coat on. These bottom shelves, uh, there's no need to do the edges because as far as clear cut goes, because they're gonna be covered up by your, your aprons or your stringers, whatever you wanna call them. Main thing is just make sure you get a good even coat all the way around. Uh, like I've said before on my finishing tips, I like to get down and you can look across it and get the light just right and you can see the places that, you, that are still dry. Along this edge, a lot of times, uh, it, it stays dry until you actually get brush on it. And even your brush, you have to actually mash on it to get it to cover that area sometimes. So I'm gonna finish up these and put another coat on my tabletop. We're gonna let these dry. We got our clear coat dry and we got our tabletop. Lay it upside down. I put an old towel down to keep it from getting scuffed and scratched. Grab a frame. Lay it on top, just like that. What I'll do is I'll take a tape measure. You know, because I'm always got one laying around somewhere. Tape measure. I'll grab my tape measure. I'm gonna measure, it should be a one inch overhang all the way around, give or take. that's what I, I had allowed for. I got my rocker tabletop fasteners. I talked about those earlier. I'll drop a link in the comments to them, either on Rocker or Amazon, whichever one you prefer. <clears throat> so there's just Z-clips. They're gonna go in these holes. They're go in these holes like that. See, they, they go in that slot. And I'm gonna put them all the way around. There should be four or eight, eight or so of these. Just snug them up, 
and then do all of them the same way and then we'll put our bottom shelf in. We're ready to put our bottom shelf in. Now you want to put the top, the tabletop on before you put the bottom shelf in because if you put the bottom shelf in then you got to work under here and you can't see through. It's just a, it's a lot easier just to go ahead and do it this way. So I mark this number two, number two, so that I know uh, which one goes where. It should be a little snug, but it shouldn't be uh, too bad. So let's try, see if we can get it to fit. So I'm just using an inch and a quarter pocket screws and I've got my, I don't think I even explained this, but I got pocket holes in these shelves uh, going to the outside and they're gonna screw into these aprons. So I got two on this side, two, two, and two. So that should be plenty. I set my impact on the lowest setting. And what I wanna do is flush this shelf up with the top of this uh, apron or stringer, some people call them. You want it to be as, as flush as you can get it Just ease it in here. You don't want to. You don't want to ratchet it down on there. Or risk busting this uh, stringer. Just a snug. Volume. These are actually really sturdy shells once they're all installed. And you see, I'm not. I'm not putting a lot of uh, pressure in there. So I'm making sure that this is flush with my hand on the back side or the underside. <clears throat> We're gonna just do them all the way around. And I'll flip this table over and show you what we got. And there we have it. A beautiful farmhouse end table. Dark walnut top and shelf. And that biscuit white frame. Man, these are these are awesome. I really like the way they look. They turn out really nice. Uh, they make a Beautiful living room piece. You see the frame of the other ones in the background. Also have a coffee table, so this is a three-piece set I've built. But I just wanted to show you how to build a small uh, farmhouse end table. Here's some bonus information for you. <clears throat> Had you wanted to put X's in here, uh, which I built several of those as well. I just haven't built any in a while to make a video on it. If if I was putting, if I was going to do an X detail, I'd have done this exact same way. You cut extra uh, two by twos or inch and a half by inch and a half stock. And what I do is I just, if you want the X to go from, from the bottom to the top, not side to side here. So I just lay this on there like that and get it in the exact position I want. And I, before all these shelves are in, I clamp that off. I'd mark this piece under here and here. And then I would cut that angle. I would cut it a little bit long and then I would trim it just a little bit at a time until it fit perfectly, until it was really snug in there. Then I would put it in there, and then on my next piece, this piece would be installed. And the next piece, and the way I install that is I take a, a pilot hole drill from the bottom uh, and uh, put a screw in it. And then on this side, just glue it and maybe put a, a finish nail or a brad nail in it. Now, if this piece is installed, you have to do this piece. I do the same thing. This piece is here. We'll pretend this is a, another cross piece and I'll lay that exactly where I want it all the way you know down to here with this piece already installed and I'll make my marks here 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 and here those four places that gives me four cuts each one of those I'll cut that angle whatever that has that works out to be and then I'll cut it a little long and then I'll trim it just a tiny bit at a time until it fits I may I may trim it five six times before it fits perfect but I want to cut it too much and then it'd be too loose and you have to start all over. But if you cut it just tiny bits at a time, especially with a miter saw, it, once you got that angle set, it's really nice. And as you're, as you're trimming close to it, if you need to adjust that angle just a little bit, uh, you can do that if it's a little long. But if you've, if you've cut it just the exact spot, you know, that exact length, and then you go to put it on there and your angle's off a little, then you can't adjust that without creating a new piece. So that's how I do X's. <clears throat> Same thing, I'll, I'll attach them. If I was gonna do an X table, Instead of this being a two before up here, 
I would have made it also a two by two uh, cross here. And that way you can pre-drill those holes and put a, a screw into the into this X. And then up from there, same thing on the other. And then where they join together, <clears throat> where the X is joined together, what I do is I glue it. And then I also put some brad nails in there just to hold it till the glue dries. If you've watched any of my table builds before, you know that one of the last things we're gonna do is put these sticky pads, uh, felt pads on the, on the feet to protect any non-carpeted uh, flooring. I buy these at Walmart. You can get them anywhere. I think they're like 10 or $11 for 160 pieces. They work really well. They stick well. And then I don't have to worry about my customers uh, cutting their floor up on this uh, lumber. Or this two before because I've sanded it down, but inevitably something can get in, you know, stuck in there. If this is soft wood, it can get gravel or anything in there, even the wood itself. You don't want them scuffing their, their nice floors uh, with your product. So I always like to put some, some felt pads on the bottom. And then it also helps them moving around their, their room. They can move it and position it any way they want and not have to worry about it scuffing their floor or even having to pick it up. It'll move easily. Awesome. If you want to support Zeus, hit that thumbs up. He likes them. Uh, sit down. Sit, 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 sit. I think this farmhouse end table turned out really awesome. It's a smaller version than the one I originally built. It's a really sturdy table. It'll last a very long time. It's beautiful in the home. You can paint them or stain them any color you want. And for about less than $50, you have you a nice table. If you want a set of two, you're less than $100 in on material so it's not bad drop a comment below let me know what you think about this farmhouse end table maybe give a thumbs up show some support to old zeus back there he's hanging out in the shop with me today if you want to see the original farmhouse table that i built the larger version you can click the video it'll be here and then if you want to see another one of my videos it'll be listed down here thanks for watching